Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Dr. Naveen, and currently final year of medicine. About 45 days are left before the final NEET PG 2022 exam, and many people are confused on how to go about these 45 days. You know, you have read the whole year, you have read for the last six months, and you are you are doing your revision, but you are confused on how to utilize the last 35, 40 days in a more effective way. So this video is meant for those people. Okay, so people who have studied well till now, people who have read well till now, people. Who are revising the subjects and who want to make the most out of the last 30 to 40 days? This video is meant for you, students. This will give you a roadmap and it will guide you in planning your trajectory better so that you take off at the right moment before the exam and you get a pretty decent, pretty good score in the final exam. And make sure that you revise all the subjects and revise all the important concepts of the subjects and how to revise this before the exam. I will tell that as well. So guys, I have divided the subjects into three categories based on the size of the subject. Alright. So uh, the first, uh, the first group of subjects consists of medicine, surgery, gynecology, kind of system, pap, pharma, micro. These are the big subjects. And the last group contains of small subjects like radio, drama, anesthesia, or and psychiatry. The weightage of the subject is also little less, and the amount of time you need to spend on the subject also should be less. So in between both of them are the subjects which have medium amount of content and medium amount of duration is required for two subjects. So I have grouped the subjects into three categories. Now for the sake of simplicity, let's call these big subjects, medium subjects and small subjects. Alright, that is clear. So guys, uh, I will tell you how to plan the next 75 days. Just stay with me here. So guys, in the next 75 days, 75 days that is you will approximately be having 5 weeks. So in that 5 weeks, you will be getting 5 grand tests and every week you will be studying 3 to 4 subjects. So you can take various combinations for that. You can either club 2 big subjects, 1 medium and 1 small or you can club 3 medium, 1 big. Now it's up to you. I leave that to your comfort. Or else you can club subjects which are similar to each other. For example, you can club orthopedics and anatomy or you can club pharmacology and anesthesia. So you will be reading 3 to 4 subjects every week and you will be giving a grand test. So that's the basic funda of this concept. So then before giving any grand test, you will revise at least for approximately 4 hours before entering the examination. So before you start giving the grand test, I want you to revise for 4 hours before the exam. You, you should be revising what you have read the last week and you should go and give the exam. You should revise for sure, you should revise for 4 hours before giving the exam. This will create an habit over time, therefore during your final exam also you will not be panicking in the last few hours, you will not be tense in the last few hours, you will be revising at that time also and that is very helpful to build your confidence before giving the exam. So be confident before giving the exam and revising till the last moment of the exam gives a lot of confidence, trust me on that. So you will revise 4 hours before the exam, whatever you have studied that whole week you will revise for 4 hours before the exam and you will go give the exam. Another thing, so you will be giving about 5 grand tests during the course of next 35 days. Make sure that all the grand tests that you are giving are from good source, which are high credibility. So what do I mean by high credibility? These are the grand tests conducted by the institutes uh, whose question paper if you review completely, there should be a high chance that most of the topics or some of the topics at least should repeat in the main exam. So I want you to give all the false grand tests where they ask all the rare difficult questions just to make just to make you feel uh, depressed with your score. I don't want you to give those false grand tests. I want you to give credible grand tests which try to replicate the main exam as much as possible. Therefore the chances of you getting similar score in the main exam is high, one thing and the topics which are you don't know in this grand test, the chance of them appearing in the final exam are also present. Therefore I want you to give grand tests from some credible source. So I have listed a few credible source here which I think are credible, my but yeah, dams, things like that. So give grand test, give credible grand test. Alright. So guys, what should you do after you give a grand test? So you have studied for one week. For example, week one, you have given grand test one. Now you will check the result. Your goal after the completion of first week is to get at least 100 questions out of the 200 right. Okay. Okay, after checking the answer sheet, now you will review the questions. So ideally you should take one to two days to review the paper. It depends on individuality also, so it's up to you. Ideally I think it should take one to two days for you to review the entire question. 
So guys, these three to four subjects that you have studied, you should make sure that you get hundred percent of those questions correct. You should aim for hundred percent of the questions being correct in that three to four subjects that you have studied that week. All right. And whatever topics you don't know, you will revise those topics as usual while reviewing the answers. But make sure it is before giving the exam and during the exam that you should you should, you should have a mindset that I know all these three to four subjects and I am going to get hundred percent of the questions correct from these three to four subjects. Alright. Okay. So if you aim for hundred percent, you at least get eighty to ninety percent of the questions from those subjects right. And remaining fourteen to fifteen subjects. So I don't want you to give any flu cases on these subjects either. The questions coming from the subject, I want you to take intelligent guesses. Need PG or a mindset. It's a game of guessing. You have the answer right in front of you. You need to guess which is the right answer. You will never be able to know all the two hundred questions. Correctly, you will be making a lot of guesses during your exam. Make sure that you are making intelligent guesses. Therefore, the chances of you getting those questions correct are also high. So, think and answer. Don't be like I did not read uh, the remaining forty fifty subjects this week. So, what you find? I just give a fluke answer. I just read the paper. No, nothing like that. You have already did your homework since the past six months, past one year. So, you are in a good position to remember the concepts and you are in a good position to make intelligent guesses. So, I want you to. Put effort by answering those questions also. So okay, after the exam and while reviewing, I want you to review all the other subjects topics as well and learn those topics because these are typically important topics and chances of them getting repeated in the main exam are also high. Therefore, you will spend the two days reviewing the paper and you will make sure that you know all the two hundred concepts which are asked in that exam. All right. So this is about week one. You will take three to four subjects and give a grand test, and you will spend one to two days reviewing the grand test. After that, you will move on to the next three to four subjects. Just before giving the exam, you will revise for four hours, like we discussed previously. But in these four hours, you will include second week's three to four topics, and also the three to four topics which you have read during week one. Therefore, you will read three to four subjects of that week, and also topics which you have read in the previous weeks. So you will revise those two sets of subjects. Before giving the exam, right before you enter the examination hall, think of it that way, and you give a grand test. Ideally, after giving the grand test, again you will do the same thing. You will see the, you will uh, after giving the grand test, you will review the answers and you make sure at least while giving the grand test, before giving the grand test, that you need to get hundred percent of the questions correct from the subjects that you have read, that you have read during week one and that you have read during week two. You should make sure that you get hundred percent of the questions correct. That should be your aim while giving the exam and before giving the exam. And again, the remaining ten to eleven subjects which you did not revise before grand test two, you will make sure you learn all the concepts that are asked in the exam. Therefore, at the end of grand test two, you will be knowing another two hundred concepts perfectly. And you will repeat the same thing for week three. Again, you will read three to four subjects in week three. Plus, you will while revising four hours before the exam, you will make sure that you are revising week one and week two topics as well. So guys, don't ask me how to revise the entire six or seven subjects in four hours. That's how you will be revising just before the final exam. You have to revise the nineteen topics. If you are good in any topic, don't revise it. Only the, choose the areas which you think are important, which you might forget, and which needs to be replenished, which needs to be repeatedly seen before the exam. You just worry about those topics. So you will be able to finish those topics in four hours before the exam. Again, you give a grand test, and after giving, while giving grand test, make sure that you aim yourself that you will get hundred percent of the questions correct from all the three weeks. What are the subjects you read these past three weeks? So you at least get ninety percent of these questions correct if you aim like that. After that, again, week four, you will read another three to four subjects, and just before giving the exam, that is four hours before giving the exam, you will revise what you have read from week one, week two, week three, and also week four. Just before giving the exam, you will revise these subjects and you will go through the grand test. And again, after the grand test, you will review. You make sure that you get all the hundred percent of the questions correct from all the subjects that you have revised so far. And what all and and what all questions you are not getting correct, you make sure that you learn your mistakes and you learn those concepts so that you don't make that mistake again. And the new subjects also take intelligent guesses and you learn those concepts from the new subjects as well. So after week four comes week five, the final grand test of this program. You will make sure that you read the remaining three to four subjects, whatever are left, and you will revise 
the entire 19 subjects just before going to the exam. Till the moment you enter the examination hall. So most of you must be giving your attendance in your library or in your room. Think of it as an examination hall. Alright. Pay strict attention to that room. Don't get up in between the washroom or anything like that. Spend every minute very attentively during the exam, just like you would spend during the final exam. So that's why we should think by giving in a mock exam. It's a final exam, you will not get up in between for washroom or anything unless it's an emergency. That should be your mindset just before giving the exam. So after week 5, before giving the final grand test of this program, I want you to revise all 90 subjects in 4 to 5 hours just before the exam. It is possible. That's how you should be revising in before the main exam as well. If you know something, if you're confident in a subject, don't revise it. If you're you know, a little doubtful in subject and you, know, you want to brush up your memory regarding those concepts in the last few minutes, you should do that now. So after revising all the subjects, you will give the grand test come, the final grand test of this program and you will review the paper and you make sure that you get a lot of questions correct because you have read already. So go with a confident mindset, go and aim for maximum amount of work. And whatever questions you are getting wrong, again you will spend one or two days to review it. So guys, this is the gist of the program. So after at week one, you will read three to four subjects, week grand test one. Just before giving grand test one, make sure that you revise for four hours before giving grand test one. In week two, again you will revise three to four subjects. And just before giving, giving the exam, you will spend four to five hours revising what you are reading week two and also what you are reading week one. You will repeat the same thing in week three, week four. And week 5 you will revise all the 90 subjects just before giving the exam and you will give the exam. After that you will review the paper and make sure that what all concepts you did not know, you know it now. So as you need to give this grand test from credible source right now, as well, like I explained because the chance of them replicating the real exam are high and chances that you will get similar topics in the real exam are also high. Therefore you must be reviewing all the questions that you have written during this 35 days. Okay, so if you have followed everything correctly and if you have given the grand test, ideally your marks as you are giving the grand test should be increasing. So it should be an upward direction. So in the first week you are getting 100 questions correct. Make sure that you get at least 120 next week, 130 next week, 140 next week. Yeah. The end of so the grand test, you should aim for at least 150 questions being correct. And these 150 will include topics that you have read, revised, practiced, and also the topics in which you are taking a correct intelligent case. So it is very important to take intelligent cases in the topic because you will not be knowing all the 200 questions, there's no way. You will only be knowing at least 50 to 100, 100 questions in that paper. And rest all, you need to take intelligent cases. The one who take most number of correct intelligent cases will beat the exam and will top the exam. So guys, this is the strategy that I want you to follow. My view is for people who have already did their homework, who have been reading for six months to one year and you, who are in the division phase and who are confused on how to go about the last 35-40 days of the exam. This is for those people. Okay, I wish you all the best and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.